Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Ladies' Lounge. I'm so happy that you have joined us today. Today, we're having a very lovely day in New York. It's not too hot and it's not too cold. And guess what? The weather has changed and I'm not out in the garden as much. Thank God, in a sense. <laughs> but I give God praise. You know, we're just enjoying the nice fall weather that's coming outside. It's a nice clear sky. I don't know where you are, but this is the day that the Lord has made yes. and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, I am Pastor Michelle Aldridge, a.k.a. MCA Aldridge, here on the Ladies Lounge. Now we're here to learn, we're here to lull, and we're here to laugh. Today, our subject is marriage. And because Pastor Michelle Aldridge is not married, she could not come up with the subject. So the subject came up by these lovely ladies that have joined me who are all married. So married. <laughs> so one lady said the subject would be communication. One said, trust, and the other said, being equally yoked. They all had their input in the subject, important in every marriage. So we have here today, Minister Mary Earl, and she will be talking specifically on marriage and communication. We have our chaplain, Hunter here, and she will be talking about trust. And then we have my lovely, lovely, lovely sister. All of these ladies are lovely, let me tell you. Grace Miller, the elder herself, has graced us with her presence once again. And she will be talking about being equally yoked. So we will begin with our minister, Mary Earl, as she talks about communication. Okay, Minister Earl, you're good to go. Yes, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Hope everybody's doing well. Um, my subject is going to be on communication of the marriage, which is the most important that me and my husband came up with when we was married. We've been married now for 32 years, but been together for 34 years. And we met on our job working together. And after that, we wound up getting married and having two kids. And from there, I can tell you that communication is the most important thing because without it, the marriage do not last. And you have to be careful how you talk to your spouse, how you treat him and most of you have to respect each other when you in an argument you have to come to some type of agreement even if you have to compromise and let him have it because sometimes they like to have the last word in my case yes sometimes you have to learn to speak and when not to speak that's what my mother and my mother-in-law always say anyway um I had did a definition on communication, which means imparting or exchanging information or news or just simply sending um, information or talking about information. Um, I have like eight steps to a Christian marriage. I'm gonna talk about Christian marriage because when I met my husband, he wasn't saved, I was. I backslid, that's how come I wanted to marry my husband, but we stayed together because of God will. God told me and God told him too, even though my husband was in and out of church too, that you're two going to stay together and you're not going to depart unless I take one of you out of this world. So God kept telling me, even though we had our ups and downs, you're not leaving him and he's not leaving you. So that's why we've been together for 32, 34 years, which is 32 years. I say 34 years because we've been together that long. Um, we love each other very much. Um, right now, um, 
he's going through some health issues which I've been with him for so long. I don't know what I would do without him. That's my partner in crime. That's why I tell everybody that's my partner in crime. <laughs> I love him dearly. You're going to have your ups and downs when it comes to communication. I don't want to spend too much time. Um, I have eight, but I want to talk about four important ones. I'm going to give you eight out of the communication, which is really, really important. And I'm just going to talk about four because we don't have much time. So um, even though I had another more definition about communication, it is about a mortar that holds a relationship together. If you break down relationship, if the relationship breaks down, it will crumble. So you need to know how to communicate in your marriage to your husband. It's, it's a true communication which involves respect for each other. You have to learn how to respect each other in this marriage. And you know, and you the other person as well have to have an active energy on, you have to have an energy part. I mean, you have to hear what he has to say, he has, and then he have to hear what you have to say, and you have to learn to agree. Sometimes you might not agree when it comes to an argument, but you got to come to communication and you have to make sure you don't go to bed angry at each other. Can't let the sun go down on you, on your wrath, because you don't know who's going to wake up. I don't know if I'm going to wake up the next morning or he's going to wake up the next morning, but you have to make sure everything is squashed and agreeable before you lay your head down at night. And sometimes you, the, the first thing I would like to talk about seeking God's leading. You have to make sure you seek God leading in your marriage. That's the first step of communication. I didn't notice to my aunt who's been married. She lost her husband. She told me, I always like to seek information from all the married women in church. And one of them is my mother and my aunt. God rest my mother's soul. She used to tell me a lot of things. And my mother-in-law too, even though she was married, she used to tell me a lot of things, you know, and I heed to it and I understand it and I'm living it because of these three women. So when it comes to seeking God's first, God has to come before you in the marriage. You have to pray on it. It should be the foremost seeking his will as well as the wife and the husband. In regards, you want to talk about your spouse, you want to um, communicate, you want to the truth according to God's word. It has to line up, the word has to line up when you meet this person and communicate with this person. So is it something that falls in line with God's words and is revealing? To me is yes, because sometimes we all get into the situation where when we sit down and talk about the person that we want to marry, and then when you start to communicate and things happen, it you have to make sure this is what you want to do. Now, in my um, situation, marriage, one, you want to put God first and all in the decision. When you make decision, when it comes to buying a house or paying bills or dealing with children, especially with children, with the medical, dental and all that, especially money, you have to sit down and talk to your husband. You just can't go behind his back and do things because then you got to hear his mouth. And see, sometimes I have to explain this to my sisters who are not married. Oh, you can do this. He ain't going to stay. Yes, he does, because I'm the one that have to hear his mouth. When I get home, where's the money? What did you do with it? Why'd you spend it? Didn't I tell you not to do that? Why'd you do that? I got to hear it. You don't. <laughs> so you have to understand that. you That's communication. You got to communicate. You got to get on the phone and say, listen, hon, um, I see something I want to get for the kids. Can I get it? Is it in the budget? If he say yes, go ahead. If he says no and you do it anyway, you got to hear his mouth when you get in that house. You don't. So... And James 1, 5 says, if anyone that's lacking wisdom, ask God for it and he'll give it generously to you. So sometimes people lack um, common sense when it comes to communicating with their spouse. I have to communicate with my spouse on anything that I do. Just like 
what I'm going through tomorrow, I had to sit down there and I had to talk to him, explain, and we got a, a found foundation, like the pastor said, foundation on what I wanted to do and the decision. I couldn't do this without him. I couldn't go behind his back. I had to sit there and talk about things. Now, the second important one I want to talk about is don't let your conversation get heated. Some people let the conversation get out of control where either you're going to be saying things you're going to regret, but you don't need to do, or you're going to have to sit back, take a deep breath and calm down and let the conversation just die down. It depends on the topic too. You need to talk about what with your spouse. It's, it's possible for a conversation to come up quickly and get heated and turn into an argument. Yes, arguments do get heated. That's why it's called communication. You've got to talk it out. You know, don't just practice, practice the other step and um, listen. You can try to avoid getting into an argument that doesn't really solve anything. Conversations that seems to be getting heated. You can try out some other things or tips immediately and stop arguing with your spouse. If you see that the conversation is getting to the place where it's going to get to the point where it's getting out of hand just stop walk away from each other that's what i do to my husband we get to the point he'll either walk out the room or i'll walk out the room or he'll just stop talking so i looked up in two verses like second timothy 2 23 26 i didn't read all of it but sometimes it, it i broke it down it says don't get involved in foolish argument if the argument is not worth it leave it alone don't don't bring it up don't bring it back up or proverbs 10 19 says too when the when the word or uh, many as transgression is not lacking but whoever restrained his lip is a prudent sometimes you have to restrain from saying things that is going to cause you to regret what you said and it's been many times me and my husband has said things to each other that we regret it but we always say i'm sorry i didn't mean to say that I mean, you know, it wasn't, you know, meant to be. And, you know, sometimes my tears start to come out of my eyes and he'll come for me. I know, I know, but you don't listen. And sometimes I don't. I could be big headed and hard headed and stubborn, but that's me. <laughs> but I learned to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying that. I'm sorry for doing that. You have to be humble, humble yourself. Sometimes you got to, you know, let each other know, you know, you're sorry. You have to communicate. Without communicating, you sitting in one corner. I don't want to talk to you. I don't care. I'm going out the door and you hear door slamming and everything else. But then you got to come back out and still face each other. And you got to, you know, in the argument or solve the problem in the argument. Okay. And um, like Proverbs 18.21 said, death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof we have that's another thing you have to be careful that tongue and that mouth is deadly like they said sticks and stones will break my bones and words will never harm you yes they do i'm so sorry to tell you words do hurt okay the next one i'm going to try to talk about is well i did that don't stay angry with each other but the considering the timing the timing when you want to talk about something make sure that when you do the timing it's not in front of company and not in front of your kids especially when you're talking about delicate delicate topic i tend to see in um some marriages that i seen my sister and them they want to embarrass each other's spouse. Don't do that. I tell my kids, don't do that. Don't. When you communicate, it got to be perfect. It got to be an innocent topic. It could be completely blown out of proportion sometimes. If you broach a bad time in, so think hard about when the best time would you like to bring up the topic or you want to discuss it. 
It might not be the time when you come home from work because you might be too tired. It might not be the time when you getting ready to go out the door or on an important phone call, you got to do assignment. Just wait, just ask them. Honey, when is a good time for us to talk about the subject? Remember the subject? Da, 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 da. Sometimes I have to remind my husband th three times or three days in advance about the subject. I might forget it. He'll remind me and I'm saying, what are you talking about? Remember the subject you want to talk about? Oh, yeah. Is it a good time now? Yeah, pick a time. And sometimes don't, you don't disrespect him or her in front of company, not in the church, not in, your, in front of your people, like in-laws and, and, and your people like that, because let me tell you something, they won't forget it. They're gonna ride you on that. It happened to me. And I promise you, I never did it again. So I learned do not disrespect your spouse in front of your folks. Okay. And Colossians 4 and 6 says, let your speech always be gracious and seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer each people. That means when you doing um, communication with your husband and talking about certain things, it's got to be the right timing to do it. And you don't scream and holler and curse in front of the kids don't do that don't because the kids gonna blame you when you get on them they're gonna blow throw it in your face when you said that to daddy and mommy no don't do that because kids don't forget don't don't do that okay the next one i wanted to talk about is do i still got more time elder miller no i i went over my time oh shoot <laughs> Nobody didn't tell me. Oh, what? Oh, okay. Only thing I can say now that I went over my time, pray, pray, pray on it. If you have anything, please pray to God and ask him to give you the right um, message to say, what to do. Just don't um, give up. Don't give up on him because I didn't give up on my husband. I, I'm, we still together today and I'm telling you right now, if I lose him today, I don't know what I would do, but I always keep, we do, we do pray together and we stay together in prayer. Next time, maybe the pastor will let me do a Friday night on this, on this subject, because there's a whole bunch of communication I could tell you about. It's a good subject. I love it. And that's why I'm still together with my husband today because of communication. I'm sorry <laughs> that I went over. <laughs> But it's a good topic. It's a really good topic. It's a lot to talk about. Okay. Bless you, Minister Earl. Thank you so much for that. Okay. We will revisit in a few minutes. Uh, bless the Lord for our chaplain Hunter. She's going to come in and then right after you will be Elder Miller. Bless God. Did you mute yourself? Okay. okay, yeah, I just did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Michelle, for this platform and giving us ladies that are in blissful matrimony uh, this <laughs> blissful opportunity. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful platform. Thank you, Minister Mary Earl, for all that you spoke about on communication. It is very, very essential to a nutrition marriage. <laughs> It truly is, it truly is. Okay, um, I am going to speak on trust. We know that, you know, trust as well is a big factor. It plays a major part in relationship, not only in marriage, it plays a major part in everything that we do, even in life, completely, continuously, wholeheartedly. Trust, trust, trust. Okay, because if we can say anything to each other, one another, trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him and he will shall he direct our path. So when we speak of trust, trust come simply from 
trusting and believing in God. So in my marriage, if God is the one that sanctioned us and, and we under his covenant, you better believe for me to trust my husband and not trust him with saying, I don't even trust God, but I trust in the Lord. I believe in the Lord. I trust God. I trust the Holy Spirit. I trust everything concerning the master. So since he put us together, I must rely on that same trust in my marriage. Because when you think about, you know, trust, you got respect, how you treat a person. It also entails commitment. It's your morals. It's your values. It's a holiness. It's, you know, being togetherness. It's a responsibility. It's accountability. It's being patience with one another, your loyalty, your actions, the way you appreciate one another. You know, like I said, it's a covenant and it's sacred. And you got to realize we take oaths. And when we joined in holy matrimony, it's under God's covenant that we come under. So anything outside of that, then something. Mm. And I mean, trust is, you know, is being healthy. You want to you want to be healthy in your marriage. I mean, you want to know your worth, both of you. I mean, just great. The greatest thing in all is what? Love. We all know that. And love is what? Love is God. And so we are committed to love one another in a relationship, your marriage, your family, your friends, your neighbors, the way you love. And also, I mean, trust goes hand in hand with our faith. Okay. I mean, because you, we got to have faith to believe, faith to trust. You know, I, I've been with my husband this August 13th. We just celebrated and renewed our 15 year wedding ceremony um, anniversary. But I have been with him a total of 21 years, May past of uh, 2020, going on 21 years next year that we, 22 next year. So the man that I met, and everyone knows, I love to say it, I got me a what? I got a Boaz. I say it all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, my husband and I, we met 21 years ago and um, we met in a place that some people you know find it to be very odd but when you look at the you know aspect of it and where it's gotten us you know even thus far in this day meeting him in a nail salon you know um now i at the current time i was single i had two children so my husband this man that i'm with my boaz that i trust he is a stepdad as well. He took me, he took my two children at the ages of 14 and four at the time. He loved on all of us conditionally. And for someone to put all of that out there, I have nothing else but to say, I can trust this man. He gave me reliability. He gave us stability. He came in and sailed on waters that, listen, it was, it was blessful. It truly was. It, it, it was a great, it was the true, you know, matrimony in heaven. I was the only person condemning myself that I thought that this man was too good even for me. I was saved. I was already a saved, sanctified, delivered, baptized, Holy Ghost filled person. But let me tell you, I was in question of that relationship because this man he offered a lot, work hard, homeowner. I mean, a good person came from a wonderful, magnificent family. I mean, I love my, you know, my entire family of in-laws. Um, he loves my family endlessly. So, I mean, in 21 years of, you know, trust and commitment, and even as uh, our sister Darlene is going to speak on being equally yoked, equally yoked just means that you are joined together, knitly fit. And, you know, even like scriptures like Psalm 143 and 8, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. So that bond, that commitment, that togetherness, we got to trust one another. 
And that's what we have decided that we would do from the time we decided to commit to one another was to trust one another. And um, even thus far, I don't have any reason and I'm not just saying it just to be saying it. Everyone that knows me know I am telling the real deal that my husband don't give me any reasons to doubt or feel that I cannot trust him. We are tight, we are close, we are in a great commitment. We communicate well, we get along well. I mean, we are that tight. I can't complain. I'll be completely honest with you and say, you know, I mean, even look how Timothy tells us that, um, you know, if you don't provide for your family, then you are denying faith in God. My husband's been nothing but a provider since I met him. There's some things, you know, okay, I'm not going to sit there and say and put our complete business. But when I tell you this woman sitting right here on this great Lord's day, I am truly blessed. And I have someone that the same way I put my trust in God, I am able to trust him in the flesh as we are two that have became one. That's just how great. I, I'm, just be, I'm just being real. I'm being real. Look in Proverbs when it tell us, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, then on the tablet of your heart. Okay? I mean, marriage itself is a ministry. It's work. I mean, it, 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 it takes the two. I mean, you, you, you say you want to become one, and that's why you took the open. That's why you committed. That's why you married. You trust each other enough that you felt that this was going to be the path that you take. And you rely and you trust and know that the faithful God is going to be the one that's going to carry you through this. You know, I can't equate my marriage that if I trust in God who sanctioned us and brought us together and put us together under his covenant of matrimony, then I need to all have that trust in my better half, the other part of me, and that I do. Consecrated and saturated, I believe completely, completely, completely that the trust in him is also mainly living in God, and that's what we do. It's two people that decide that they're gonna build a life and trust together. And that's what we're doing. We're still relying on each other. We're, we're confident with one another. We are feeling safe with each other and all of those things, emotionally, physically, stability, you know, family, work, church, ministry, everything we do, every facet, you know, and um, it's a good thing. I mean, when you have the greatest thing, which is love. So I strongly say that um, trust, Trust, trust. And when you have that, you keep it, you hold on to it, and you believe in that. And I'm going to close with um, husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. OK, so, yes, my husband is the head of this house and God is the head of both of us. And it works for us. He knows that I love God more than anything in life. And even that works for both of us. Because that's how committed I am. And I'm going to share so I do not go over my time with you. My books. I am a new author and my book is titled Church Hurt at Its Worst. This is my book. This is the hardcover version. It is $27.99. There's a lovely picture of me and my baby, my man, my hubby, <laughs> my boo, and whatever else you want to call them that works for me. And us on the black jack as well with the scripture. Oh, I need to go this way. Okay. And this is the back. And my book is available also in paperback for $15.99. It does not have the bonus picture, but um, this is the back in paperback. And it is $15.99. You can go on my website, www, 
www.chaplainarhunter.com. Go in grace, go in peace. Thank you. Yes, you know what? Um, I like to tease married people if they're doing something uh, with their husband. Um, I'll say, oh, you're out with your boy. Excuse me. Tell him that he will get his turn on the ladies' lounge. Exactly. I know he heard me. <laughs> Yeah, that's how he ran off. He heard you. Yes. So, you know, I always tease and say uh, to the married people, um, I'm going to tell your husband that you have a boyfriend. So you missed out the boyfriend. Ah. Your boo. You missed it out. <laughs> so he's your, your boyfriend as well. Yeah. Your yeah. number one. Your, your, your yeah. 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 Partner yeah. in crime. Everything. Correct. Correct. Well, partner in love for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Chaplain Hunter. Now we're going to move on to uh, the Grace Miller. She had a little issue with her phone. So she has to use um, her sister's phone. So she has her sister's phone there. Elder Grace Miller. I don't know why. You muted yourself? Okay, go ahead. I, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I do. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is um, Grace Miller, Elder Grace Miller. And I have been married now for 35 years. And um, I believe that the, um, the reason that I have been married for so long is because I, we are equally yoked. Second, the book of Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? Now, being equally yoked is more than just marrying a Christian man because you are a Christian. It is more than that. You have to, as we discussed in our first panel in September, that you, uh, as a single person, you should pray and ask God, tell him what your requirements are for a partner and look for him to provide that partner for you. Now, it is important to be equally yoked because um, sometimes as a Christian, you can, uh, you, you say to yourself, you're a, a single woman in the church, you're saved and you say you want to marry a saved man. But that saved man might not be at your spiritual level where you are. And it's important that you're both at the same place in the sense that if one of you say, for instance, I'm gonna, I don't wanna um, beat up on the men. So I'm gonna beat up on a woman for a change. Say for instance, your husband has been saved and in the church for a long time. And you just got saved, like say a couple months ago or a year ago, and some problem come up in the marriage, say probably illness, and your faith might not be at his, in his level to believe that God will heal you. Amen. So you understand what I'm saying about being on the same spiritual plane and being equally yoked. I remember when I first got saved um, from a, I got saved in a Baptist church and my peers, um, there was this young lady and this uh, gentleman was always saying, we're all Christians together. He was always saying, oh, you're going to be my wife. You're going to be my wife. And she would say to him, is that so? God did not tell me that you're going to be my husband. When he tells me that you're going to be my husband, then okay. Right? So we need to know that uh, the person that we are planning to marry is the person that God has for us. Amen. Um, and 
when you are seeking to get married also, the Bible also talk about in the mouth of two and three witnesses. Somebody in your circle will probably come to you and say to you, you know, this gentleman, um, he's God's will for you. Or God will talk to you himself. I think she's frozen. Miller, you're frozen. I think she's frozen. She's probably still talking, but she's frozen. Okay. So everyone else can hear me, right? Yes, I think she, she's, uh, she's frozen right now. So we'll wait until she comes in. But some of the points that were made so far is um, to, uh, concerning communication, Minister Earl was saying that um, somebody has to take down when there's an argument. So it can't be um, everybody, her thing, she went off completely off the grid. <laughs> but somebody has to be able to, um, to, somebody else, what is that? Okay. Somebody has to be able to take, take down in the argument because everybody cannot be right. Okay, am I correct, married ladies? I'm gonna unmute you so I can hear your comments. Okay, I cannot unmute you for some reason. Can you unmute yourself, Chaplain Hunter? Okay, I just did. Okay, okay. okay. So she, um, Minister Earl, I believe is on another call. So um, one of the points that Minister Earl made, she was talking about how um, some somebody has to take down in an argument yeah. and, um, you know, take the low road and somebody takes the high road. Uh, in other words, not both people battling at the same time. And um, that is very important, even in general relationships, not just in marriage relationships. Correct. If you, you have a person in your life and you do value that person to be in your life, um, you, you have to try to, we have to try to find a common ground. And as the term says, agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Yes. So uh, it's, it's also applicable to other relationships, um, to regular relationships um, in a marriage, especially. Because you're, you're, you, when you marry somebody, you are saying that you really um, intend to spend the rest of your life with this person. Till death do, do you part. Yes. 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 So as a pastor, you know, <laughs> I have to know these things, but not married, but I have to know these things too. <laughs> so uh, when you take the vow, you say till death do you part. So you value this person. So right. as, as Minister Earl was pointing out that we have to um, understand that somebody has to take down in the argument yes. and not always, you know, say, you know, I'll take the wrong today. You know, like the Bible does say it, you know? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, does. why don't it you does. just suffer yourself to be to be the wrong person in essence? Yeah. Okay, just, just mm -hmm. take, say I'm wrong and you are right and just call it a day. Yes. And, you know, and one of the things too, um, Minister Earl, that um, you were talking about concerning that you have to forgive each other. Yes. You have to forgive. You can't hold the thing and con constantly throw it in the man's face. Oh, yes. remember when you did this and remember when you did that. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's yes. something too um, that we have to understand that we can't just throw things out. And even as um, Chaplain Hunter was saying that trust is essential, not just in marriages, but in general relationships. Yeah. But it is important, especially in a marriage, because still, till death do you part. Fifteen years. Yes, fifteen years and yeah. thirty-two years and thirty-five yeah. years. I was thirty-five <laughs> year old. 35 year old was married, what lady fell off the grid. I should have given her um, some other, my phone or something, but I need it sometimes. So anyway, um, she's actually here in the house. She's on the other side, Louis, because they're on the other side of the house. But um, 
it's 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 very important for us to understand these things. Um, and even the scripture that you gave, Captain Hunter, what was the last scripture you gave? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Yes. And yes. Ephesians, yeah. Yes. But also women are to reference their husband. Yeah. Not, 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 not like when he come in the house, oh, most holy husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh-uh. Where's your husband? <laughs> not, not oh most holy husband. You came in the house. No. What can I do to serve you there? Because guess what? Marriage is I serve you, you serve me, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes right. Mm -hmm. It goes both ways. Both ways. It's a conduit, both yes. ways. That's right. We are equal. Mm -hmm. We are equal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. um, I'm sorry the Elder Miller fell off, but she was talking about how you have to know, um, that God did speak to you about that particular person, yes. and that, um, you know, she did give a testimony before to say that she, she, when she had the cancer, I could give that part to her. Yeah. Um, maybe I could get her to come downstairs for a hot second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Allie, can you go tell her to come downstairs if she wants to come down to conclude? She can come next to me here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, um, so if sickness and health, she, and yes, that was through right. sickness and health because mm -hmm. even Minister Earl, you could talk a little bit about that. Yes. She did mention that because yes, she I, said, you said your husband has had health challenges. Uh, yes, he had a lot of health challenges and I've been there where other people, once you tell them like the other spouse, oh, I got this, they run away. You can't run away. You're there to help them. Like I've been with him when he had his heart attack, his open heart surgery, My his God. three kidneys. Um, and uh, even with the challenges he's have now, like half walk have problem walking whatnot but still that's my husband that's what god gave me and he said you two gonna stay together to death do your part so yes. now it's his turn to take care of me yes yes and bring the chair Allie. Bring the chair. and that's what you know it's all about you got to take yes. care of each other i mean it was a rough time yes. some that that at times but we still have to be there for each other and, you know, trust God and he'll bring us through it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So yes. Um, marriage is, um, it's its a lot of things involved. She's coming now. She's yes. here. It's she a came lot from, of work. She and came from yeah. <laughs> <and I'm laughs> marriage, is, marriage is a lot of work. If you're willing to put the work through it and trust God to um, see you through it, it'll work. Marriage oh, will gonna, work. Mm -hmm. She's gonna, you're gonna sum it up now because you got like two minutes. I have to sum it up. <laughs> okay. She looks uh, just like my mama. I, Aww. as far as communication is concerned, yes. um, Minister Earl, how do yes. you communicate when your husband says to you, um, oh, I told you when you were sleeping? Like he'll say, I told you so and so. And I'm like, when did you tell me this? Oh, I when you were sleeping? No, that's the wrong time to tell me when I'm sleeping. No, you got to tell me again. But he'll tell me the same thing. If I could tell him something Monday, it was Thursday. I don't remember you telling me that. So I have to go back down or get Tara or Tiffany. Please tell your father I did that. Mom did tell you this. And then he'll tell, oh, oh, okay. All right. And then he'll tell me no and then walk away. I said, wait a minute, we have to talk about this thing. Not now, not now. So I have yeah, to Well, home. I suppose that's one of the things that makes marriage exciting sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah, when yeah. they say things like that. And as far uh -huh. as trust is concerned, um, yeah. I know when I was working and um, my unsafe coworkers would say to me, how can you trust your husband? You know, you sure that he's this and you sure that he's that? And I always tell them, I trust God in him. Yes. yes. Amen. I Absolutely. Because same. I know that he has yes. a relationship with God. Yes. He, is, he was saved even before I got saved. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to want to do anything that displeases God. So I know I can trust 
God in him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the part about being equally yoked. Yo. Yes, when you're right, equally right. yoked, you know that beyond the shadow of a doubt yeah. that mm-hmm. God is in your relationship, He's in the mat in your marriage. Right. He is uh, the center of your marriage. Yes, and he is. I can say that I love God more than my husband. Yes. 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 But it works. I love God more than me. <laughs> and then together we make it work. Amen. That's right. We That's love right. God more than we love each other because sometimes our spouses can become our idols. Yeah. And we don't want that to happen. No. No. Right. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Because no. God is the one that brought us together in the first place. That's so right. And why we would right. we make this person become an idol in our lives. All right. So I just thank God. I want to encourage all those women out there who are not married, who are looking to get married, to just trust God and right. believe God and occupy until God sends your husband to you. That's why I tell my daughter. Tell God what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. My sister will tell you that I don't love the kitchen. I do not love the kitchen. As a matter of fact, when my husband came to meet my parents and to ask for my hand in marriage, my mama told him she don't like to cook. (laughs) And he said to her, it's okay, Mrs. Aldridge, I will teach her. So now we, we, um, we help each other out where my failing, he fills that in and I'll fill in his failing. Yeah. So he'll be in the kitchen all the time. Thank you, Jesus. All right now. <laughs> that he don't really love to do. Like he don't really no like to wash down the bathroom or anything. I don't mind doing that. I will do it happily. So yeah. we complement each other, and that's yes, what yes, marriage yes. is supposed to be that's about. Correct. Complementing so each other, mm-hmm. and even sometimes your husband or your wife might say something to you that you're upset about it. You know, when you know beyond the shadow of the doubt that God brought you together, you can just go to the Father and say, "Listen, Father, you mm-hmm. brought this man into my life. Who fix it? Who fix it?" That's right. That's right. Before you That's know it. it, that man will come and apologize to you yeah. without right. you having to have said anything to him. Because yeah, God has understand. already convicted his heart and yeah. he comes and he apologizes. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about being equally yoked and knowing that your spouse is from God. Can you can go to your heavenly father mm-hmm. and you can say to him, Daddy Jesus. That's it. Amy, this yep. man, you see what's going on here, Lord? You got to fix it. <laughs> Amen. And I have I, mean, I say so that all the time. You got to fix it. You fix it, Jesus. It. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I am a living testimony as far as that is concerned. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> See, okay. I told you we're gonna have fun on this on this segment <laughs> okay, today. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have not many comments, but I'm, <laughs> I didn't see any questions. But I do like to ask the other ladies if they have any closing remarks before we close our ladies' lounge today. Captain Hunter. Okay. Um, I would like to say that um, also in a marriage, you know. You both fear the Lord. When you're two God-fearing people, it coincides with everything. Amen. Bless it God. sanctions the entire foundation that the marriage is built on. And a marriage is, to me, once you marry, I think you marry not only to still continually date, you do marry to commit, you marry to fulfill, and you marry to live and grow together. And in that growth, you're going to build as well. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And marriages should be um, healthy. I mean, we may not be able to control the physical part of that on certain medical aspects, but when I say the word healthy, I mean wholesome. Your mind, your heart, your spirit. Yes. If it becomes, you know, a attack, you know, that is something, you know, from the medicine and, you know, we'll leave 
the physicians, and then of course our great physician, Master Jesus, Luke, the great physician to take care of those things and work that out. Mm -hmm. But when you live and write in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, you already are walking the right line. Well, you already um, got the right covenant. From a pastor standpoint, I would like to, anybody that's watching, um, as she said that um, uh, Chaplain Hunter was saying about fearing the Lord, from a pastor standpoint, um, you know, the scripture says the married bed is holy, it's undefiled, okay? Um, so if you have a spouse and the spouse wants to bring another say, oh, let's do a threesome or let's mm -hmm. try swinging. Remember the marriage bed is supposed to be holy. And right to what um, Chaplain Hunter just said, you have to fear God. Yes, yes. So if you fear God, both of you fear God, you will not go into the process of saying, oh, I will bring someone else into the marriage bed. Or I will try, we're going to try something really, um, if she's not comfortable with it and he wants to do it. And we know marriage is a, a bunch of compromises. This is just from a pastor standpoint. because I'm yeah, never Sacrifice, sacrifice. Yes, and yes. It's, it's, it's a, you know, you have to compromise in certain things, yeah. but within the, param the parameters of fearing God and staying holy. Holy. Okay. Living All right home. now. Um. Uh, Minister Earl, what did you say? Um, only thing I can tell, say, if there's a Christian woman out there who has a husband that's not saved, I read in 1 Corinthians 7, 12, 16, said if a Christian woman has a husband who's not a believer and is willing to continue to stay with her, she must not leave him. But don't leave your mate, just, you know, trust God and trust in God. If it's possible, you can win that person over whatever you doing. That's how it happened with my husband, me and my husband. As long as I kept going to church, he kept praying. I didn't know he'd get up early in the morning before me and he's praying and God answered his prayer. So when you got a person who's believing that person be converted over too, because my aunt who was a deaconess would tell me that she said I'm, she, I like I said I always listen to the people who already been married and knows what they're talking about and my aunt did marry an unchristian man converted but they had problems but he did respect her because she was a Christian woman and he converted anytime he needed a thing he would go to her for questions just like he does if he don't understand something in the bible he would come to me I would interpret it and understand it and that's what I'm telling a lot of women, even like Chaplin said with her husband, they are together as one God fearing couple. So is me and my husband. And trust me, my husband do believe in God. He might have his foot in one and, and his foot in the <laughs> other, but he does believe in God. <laughs> trust, trust me, he is staying where he is. He's staying put. We're that's staying together. together. So. Yes. Yes. You know, pray. The Bible though, says it. Yes. The Bible, the Bible says, says it, it with, but still love pray on it. and kindness. Yes. yes. Love, love, and and kindness. love and kindness. I have my yes. 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 So continue but, to show him that love and kindness. <laughs> Daddy. Yes, I will. Daddy. <laughs> yes, he will. Yes. Yes. I know you'll say daddy sometimes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And um, there are also books out there that yes. um for those who are um, aspiring to be married christian books yes. there is one book in particular i don't remember the title of it but it's written by beverly and tim lahey l-a-h-a-y-e okay. and yes. it speaks about everything concerning the marriage it speaks yeah. about um sexual relationships and what is good in you know what works for you in the bedroom and stuff like that. It deals with a lot of issues. Yeah. So um, there are books out there. If you search it, you know, you do sure, some research, sure, sure. you can find yeah. some really good books out there that will give you Christian guidance, yeah. you know, yes. when you're about to get married. That's it. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies, married ladies. Okay. So I'm looking at three halves. Yes. 
rehabs that makes, you know, but it's not halves in the sense of broken women. You are mm-hmm. strong women. Yes. You're holy women. Yes. You're women that understands about trust, communication. That's and right. How to be and equally yoked. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Ladies Lounge. Goodbye, Elder Miller. Goodbye. Oh, good. Bye. She's running me away from her. <laughs> oh, everyone have her a blessed day. Hey, you too. You too. So, thank you so much for joining us today on the Ladies Lounge. I hope, I just pray that you listen to these ladies and you understood what they're saying. Of course, all our panel discussions here on the Ladies Lounge are all discussions that we will revisit. So you can always put a question inside the comments box that we can talk about in our future Ladies Lounge concerning yeah. marriage. Mm-hmm. And our, anything you could just, you wanna say, just let us know, inbox us, and we will get questions to the different ladies. Please, please, please support my sister, Chaplain Hunter with her book, hallelujah. She has the information there on the comment section. Yes. It's right here, it's right here, it's right here. And we're going to support her. Glory to God. So we thank God for you joining us today. Next Friday, we will be here 7 p.m. with our pastor, Georgette Taylor. Hallelujah. She's prophetess, pastor, Georgette Taylor. She'll be here to join us and to do the prayer and the word. We just bless God for you today here on the Ladies Lounge. I hope you did learn something. I hope you lulled and relaxed. And I hope you laughed with us. Yes. Bless God for all of you. Thank you, Chaplain Hunter. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Earl. Thank, Thank you, you, Elder you. Miller. Please join us again next Tuesday at 3 p.m. for the Ladies' Lounge. Have a wonderful day. I, I didn't mean it, just a wonderful day. Just a wonderful day in Jesus. Bless you.